Um, so, Taco, you are with June and uh, the, the temporal chalice in the white space, um, and you are sort of scanning through the memories of, of your life. Okay. Uh, at the the fateful final episode of Sizzle It Up with Taco, and here uh, she 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 stops fast forwarding, and the scene stops. You see the town of Glamour Springs, and you see your stagecoach, uh, and it's been kind of deployed. Like the 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 there's a little window um, where where you are, are doing all of your cooking. Uh, the stagecoach is nice and big, and it's got all the cooking instruments you could possibly need. There's like a little oven in there that sort of pops out of the back of the stagecoach uh, for for ventilation. There's a, a, a stove top where you're doing some stuff. There's a big long counter for for prep and 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 where you do all your magic. Um, and there were forty, forty people. Okay, mm-hmm. there was always there's always a few sort of uh, a, a few teens that had nothing better to do. Okay. Um, usually the older people in the village uh, were usually the biggest audience. Um, a lot of you know uh, housewives and house husbands that that looked after the home and were looking to elevate their cooking. To, I see. I got you for their special someone. Um, um, and then there was always you know a few looky loos that just were looking for a free show. And I think the people there really love you. Like you've you've probably been through here a couple times. Yeah. Um. And and forty is probably a pretty big crowd. You you got a decent sized turnout here. And I think a lot of people maybe just show up for the free samples, free food, free food, right. and also a great show. Taco does a lot of things to show off his cooking prowess. Like like he'll say this recipe calls for like a teaspoon of Worcestershire, and then he'll pour some Worcestershire in his hand. Yeah, a lot of people wonder how I can do that and and be so inaccurate. But look, and then he'll pour some Worcestershire in his hand and then pour it into a teaspoon. It's like exact. I had a a driver, okay. who, well, sort of a driver slash stage like a, manager, like a roadie. Roadie. What was their What was their name? Um, I gotta remember <laughs> their name because it. I I I knew him. It was weird. I knew him like yeah the uh, back of my hand. Say Zed. Say Zed is uh he was a, a a sort of my right hand man. Okay. He 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 thought I hung the moon and uh and you know he learned some of the cooking from me but mainly was just sort of there he was sort of a combination of bodyguard and uh Okay. Uh, okay, so you've been traveling with Say Zed for a long time performing sizzle it up for for varying size crowds and your relationship with Say Zen has has been pretty well. You've been teaching them uh, how to you've, you've been teaching him how to cook and and uh, he in turn has done a good good job you know keeping the trains running on time but your show's been growing in popularity and it, it's grown a lot actually in the last year in in a, a, the last a uh, couple months or so says Ed comes to you before each show and it's like so you think I could uh, you think I could do my stuff on on this one just like a little a little spot I mean I'll let you do. You can get the mise en place together and stuff. You know, measure things out in the little cups. It makes everything run smoothly. That's fine. Okay. While they're getting the mise en place together during those shows, though, um, and I think it probably only happened a couple times, they would, like, turn around and hand you the thing and then, like, dish out a little catchphrase to the audience, like, shop some stuff out, like, test it out. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of floating, trying to build their brand. They're trying to build their brand. And then, like, I think after a couple shows, Say Zed says, like, look, listen, I've... I've really enjoyed working with you, and I think I think what would be great is if we could co-host this thing, just like shared credit. Put uh, your names up on the the stagecoach, and it looks awesome. But it, what do you think about sizzle it up with Taco and say Zed? Just like shared credit, fifty fifty split, and you know we share the workload and it, it, we share the share the glory, you know, and we we just mm. what do you think? Well, that is so groovy. I love that. It trips off the tongue, you know. But um, I got all these T shirts. That already says this love with taco. I can get new t-shirts. I can. You, I printed those t-shirts for you, no, so I can. I can print out new t-shirts. That's a bad business, say Zed. I, I would love to help you out, but it's just bad business. Sizzle it up with taco is the brand. I mean, we'd have to throw all these in the in the junk pile, and you can't ride on them. There's not enough puffy paint in the world for all these t-shirts to add say Zed on there. Sorry, it's mainly a merch thing, a license, a merch, and the brand. You know, I've got the logo painted on the side of the uh, wagon. Already, so I don't know. I, I have my brand established. I just don't think it it jives. He's, he says that's like okay, all right. I get it. I get it. Okay. 
Uh, and Do you get it? Because I don't want to keep having this conversation. No, it's locked in, definitely. I, I got it, Taco. And Excellent. says that's kind of dejected and goes back to clean, cleaning up the stagecoach after a, a particularly rambunctious show that you did. So I think says that's kind of moody over the over the you know the next couple months uh and this brings us to the final show at at glamour springs i am making my 30 garlic clove chicken that's a lot of garlic cloves you know you would think so but okay. you cook it so long <laughs> sure. that you really you you lose a lot of the like m- the most pungence and the most heat but you definitely get that flavor deep down in it. it's a long it's a long cook it's a long cook taco remembers this like recipe, like the back of his hand, like over the next, you know, until today, probably every every day, Taco thinks about this recipe and thinks about the measurements and thinks about what they could have possibly screwed up so very, very badly. E- an equal measure of advanced cooking techniques and transmutation magic. And I think some of the latter is probably like unnecessary, like transmuting yeah. sugar into salt when you had a big tub of, tub of salt just like right there. Yes, absolutely. Like taking the skin off the chicken and then transmuting the chicken into chicken with skin on it. Like just pointless. And so you finish the meal and the audience has been wrapped this whole time. And you go to offer samples and the the audience starts to walk towards your stagecoach and time freezes. And you remember what happens next. Um, Everybody dies who eats that chicken. And that's the last time that Sizzle It Up with Taco ever ever uh, takes place. But it hasn't happened yet in this scene. Time has been frozen. And June sort of grabs you by the wrist, still holding the cup in her other hand. And she says, come with me. And she walks you behind the stagecoach to another smaller wagon. You, you sort of pass through the wall of that smaller wagon. Sitting inside on a small crate um, and sort of looking extremely nervous, like gripping his hair and looking, staring intently down at the floor is Cezad, and they're holding a bottle. And there's an apothecary's note scrawled on its lid, and you can see that this was a bottle full of arsenic. Well, I, I guess this must come as some small relief, right? Like all this time you thought your transmutation, your your reckless magic is what killed the town of Glamour Springs. In actuality, it was, you know, plain old jealousy. But still, all those people died. And then she snaps her fingers and you're back at the stage and you see yourself about to hand out these samples. The people of this town died all the same and you fed them their death. We ran. As soon as the first person got sick... I I knew what was up. I thought I knew what had happened. Um, but I thought I'd confused. I used to use the elderberry garnish, uh, and uh, I thought I had confused elderberries for um, th- that. I had transmuted them basically into deadly nightshade because the, the berries look very familiar. Sure, and I would I wouldn't have noticed. Um, that's what I always assumed because anything else I I would have seen. But we ran. As soon as the first person got sick, I told Cezad to get in the driver's seat, and we just drove. We drove for two days straight before we stopped to look back. And I and I think at the first chance that he got, like the first settlement you got to after that? He abandoned me. Absolutely. Yeah. I assume because he didn't want to be associated with somebody who could do something like that. But in actuality, it's it was something else. But we're not there yet. We're still at the wagon. You're still about to hand out these samples. This is the worst thing that ever happened, Taco, in your life. And you can fix it. If you claim me, none of this ever happened. Glamour Springs lives. And you can keep doing your your cooking show. And you won't have this... You won't have this horrible black mark on what is otherwise a heroic legacy... Take me, Taco. Take the cup, and you can fix it all. 